Is this thing on? Hi everybody, I'm Julia Forsyth and I am the Associate Director here at the Center for Pedagogical Innovation at Brock University and I'm happy to talk to you a little bit about OER advocacy. So where I'm situated in the Teaching and Learning Center, we support faculty and TAs across the university in all things related to teaching and learning and in particular one of our portfolios um, is open educational resources. Uh, personally, you may have seen my visual notes. Uh, I take a lot of them at every conference I've gone to. I have hundreds of them online um, that I release under a Creative Commons license. Um, and so people can take, reuse, uh, remix them as, as they like. And I've gotten feedback that that's really valuable. And so that's, that's one little tiny piece of OER that I, I put out into the world that I'm happy um, people can find value in. Um, when I'm talking with uh, faculty, I always start from a personal perspective because I, as a poor student, often had to choose between textbooks or food. And so um, when I was making decisions about whether I could stay in a course, it often had to do with whether the textbook was affordable. That's not always the most compelling argument. I, I try and also have a broad, broader perspective. Uh, and one of them, I think, has to do with uh, academic freedom. So when, a, when you choose a textbook, you often will only assign one big textbook like this, and then you have to choose from within it. And it um, you know, has that one perspective. You can change the order, but basically, it's basically that one book. Whereas if you're creating an open educational resource or using an open educational resource, you have this ability to have multiple perspectives and multiple modalities. So you could choose an article, an open access article. You could choose an OE, open educational resource that's an image or a video or a, um, you know, a portion of a, tech, a textbook chapter. And you can put these all together. And really, uh, these multiple means of representation are are one great format for universal design for learning, which I think, um, pedagogically speaking, is, is uh, a really um, great thing about open educational resources that allows you that kind of flexibility. And then when I'm talking to faculty and administrators, uh, the key thing uh, I often cite is, often the key thing that I cite is this right here is that OER transforms access. So through affordability, students will perform the same or better learning outcomes. Um, and we have enough data now that show that. So when you're talking to administrators about retention, you know that students are gonna have a better chance of staying in that course if they can access the materials and they're going to be more, more or same uh, level of success if they had the materials for both of them. And so you're just removing these barriers uh, for access. Um, and so, between all of those um, advocacy points, uh, I do have a lot of uh, faculty who are willing to give it a try and willing to uh, adopt some open educational resources. And then when it comes to creating open educational resources, um, you know, uh, academic currency is citation. And so if other people are adopting and reusing your textbook, that's a form of material that um, that could go on your annual report. Um, we have a little bit of work to do as far as uh, what counts as scholarship, and uh, that's a big area for me is that open scholarship transcends just your research portfolio and that it should go into your teaching as well. And so that's a whole other front. Um, and talking about open pedagogy and the processes of teaching are also really important that are part of open educational resources um, at, in a wider spectrum. Um, so those are just a few of the perspectives. I'm uh, happy and glad that you invited me today and I hope you have a great conference.